If there's one thing I've absolutely hated about Nintendo for the last 10 years, it's their absolute rigidity on their pricing. I've managed to buy plenty of games on other platforms for a third of their original price long after they've come out. First party Nintendo games? Never come down in price. Never get discounts. The only first party Nintendo IP I managed to buy for 10 bucks on the Wii was Metroid Other M. And boy, doesn't that just say something. I'm pretty sure that until the recent release on the eShop devalued it, you'd be lucky if you could find a copy of Mario Kart DS for that much less than the three sequels that follow it, which all take place on vastly superior platforms. It's ridiculous. But Nintendo are finally starting to get it. Among a myriad of awesome DLC pricings and some neat buy one two get one free eShop deals, we finally have our first retail Nintendo game which costs sub 60 US dollars, or sub 90 Australian. Captain Toad started out as a bunch of mini game levels in Super Mario 3D World, and my response was, well, they're okay. I was actually quite down for the idea of a fully fledged game, particularly one that Nintendo didn't see fit to overcharge for on the grounds that, hey, they're Nintendo, they're better than everyone else. Of course, that was three months ago. I didn't touch it until a couple of days ago where I sat down and played through it in two sittings. And uh, let's just start off by saying that I don't think my standards for single player puzzle games are anomalously high. There are two games at the top of that pile, and they both start with P. And uh, it looks pretty. Captain Toad sure looks pretty. It's a good demonstration of the power of bloom lighting, which is especially impressive considering how much of a crutch it was last generation. The game's origins are based on a dream the creator had about how cool it would be to have a diorama-like world to navigate in, and indeed that aspect seems fully realised. It's a unique aesthetic, feeling like you're looking into a kind of toy box, but that word is the big problem here. Aesthetic. Every quality I can praise Captain Toad for is superficial. It doesn't have any meaning beyond charm and eye candy. And it makes me wonder if it and the bargain price tag are meant to be disguises. Because mechanically, this is one of the most shallow and banal puzzle games ever made. I have problems with this game even on a conceptual level. Most good puzzle games, or even just games with puzzle elements, are about giving you a new unconventional power and the environment moulding to compensate. Even the Mario games are about using your unbridled acrobatics and your agility against everything in your way. In Captain Toad, all of the challenge is about how the game takes control away from you and is working against you. You can't jump and the camera is almost entirely manually controlled, which is how it hides everything. It's a disempowering premise to be sure, but there's not even enough nuance to it to make you feel anything, except that you're fighting against the game rather than learning the game's rules and beating it at its own. It's hard to explain how the general simplicity of the game makes it feel so banal, because I also know this game was deliberately meant to be on the lower end of the difficulty scale. That's why there are practically no time limits in this game. But with no real edge to proceedings, every puzzle can just be solved through attrition, and some puzzles can only be solved through attrition, because some solutions are completely hidden from you even by this game's standards. And where's the fun in that? The Aperture Science Test Labs, or any number of dungeons in Zelda, give you a variable but somewhat grounded rule set, which is what's in your inventory or move list at that point, and you have to figure out how to interact with the environment with what you have. You have to figure out which peg goes in which hole. In Captain Toad, it's closer to say that they give you the peg, but just hide the hole from you and call that a brain buster. The vast majority of situations are just working your way through the environment until you get to whatever puzzle element the level was based on, activating it, and moving forward. Even if you stop to get all the secret gems, which I did as much as I could, it's usually only a little off the beaten path or only requires a bit of backtracking and reworking the pieces. Because most solutions are immediately obvious as they come up, there is no mental fulfillment from doing them. At times it feels like you're just running through a checklist. And while some puzzles in other games can have obvious or easy solutions too, it's usually by a point of the game where the puzzles get complex enough that you have to start chaining things together. So if you figured out what to do before you actually start working at the puzzle, it's probably because you've mastered the rules of the game. That is the best sort of beating a game. And if a puzzle tends to stump me in one of those games, it's usually because I haven't explored enough or haven't quite stumbled upon the right combination of variables, and it makes me feel like the game legitimately beat me, that the level was designed to truly test my knowledge of every concept, even past ones. Here, I felt like I was either too smart for the game, or the game was cheating. That still bugs me, that the entire premise for the game is based on taking control and agency away from the player. I never felt truly comfortable using the camera, but that's basically how you have to solve every puzzle in the game. And even with every level being a different flavour, the fact that every solution requires the same methodology does not give the game enough legs, even over a main story that is only 4 hours long. Oh yeah, you can bet I wasn't impressed enough by the game to try out any of its bonus episode. And for fuck's 
fuck's sake. If you're making a level-based single-player puzzle game, give us a fucking retry button. I can easily see myself getting some complaints to comparing the game to Portal too much, to which I respond, no comparison or contrast could change how bored I was during the entirety of this adventure. Portal is just still the top of the heap when it comes to designing a puzzle game. Not too difficult, but certainly not easy, and it makes you feel like a genius for its meticulous design. Again, even Zelda, which is frankly becoming an alarmingly stale series, adds great puzzles by way of your inventory and how it evolves over the course of the game, compared to Captain Toad it's practically trigonometry. And it also pains me to say as many mean things as I have about a game whose creative direction is very clear, but Captain Toad is very clearly a case of style over substance, the absolute last direction you want to take a puzzle game. It might look very appealing, but it has nothing to hide, and it does that anyway. And why does the ending say that the adventure continues in 3D World, a game that's been out for over a year? Whatever, I'm done with this game.